So as a victim of domestic violence, the first thing that you need to do is to reach out, be it to your doctor, your friend, your mother, your sister. Again, COVID has stopped people having that option to go and meet people and discuss it. So when you go to court, it's a very private, it's a very dignified process. You are on your own in the courtroom, just with the judge and the registrar. It's not a public court. There's no intimidation. There's no room for fear in the court. The reason that you're there is because you've lived with that fear. So you go and you make your application and you get the options available to you from the court to give you the protection that you clearly need. So if there's a maintenance order and it's not being paid, it's something that the courts will take a very dim view on because obviously the initial application was made by the primary care because they needed that extra, extra source of money for the children. If your maintenance is not being paid, you can go to the district court and you can make an application for a breach of a maintenance order or you can seek that a debtor summons be issued against the person who is supposed to but has failed to pay the maintenance. This is taken as a very serious breach in the courts because the court's view is maintenance is for the benefit of the children and again the parents are using it as a point scoring exercise. There is options available, secure them in the district court. So the court doesn't just make a decision by reason of the submissions that are made to them in the court with regards to, to custody. Yes, it's absolutely considered what the council has set out to them, but they have to look at it at all times under the legislation protecting the best interests of a child. So when somebody presents who maybe has an addiction issue, maybe has a gambling issue, um, where you know joint custody may not be in the best interest of the child, the court will not grant it. They'll say it's premature, come back another time, or they'll adjourn it for the person to be given the opportunity to change their lifestyle so that the court will consider it then. So when it comes to the financials of a family law case, divorce or, or judicial separation, I think there's somewhat of a myth that it's going to be 50-50 down the middle, equal share, division of everything. Um, in reality, that's not how it is. What has to be looked at is proper provision for both parties, particularly where one of the parties is going to have the kids living with them. That's what the courts will look at. So if you're a legal aid client or if you're a multimillionaire client, proper provision for the parties is what it looks at. The simple way to look at it is like this. It was one house with two incomes. It's now two houses with one income. It's a really good question. Is there such thing as a good divorce? You know what? Yes, because you're going to have situations where people just shouldn't be together anymore. They really shouldn't be together anymore in their interests, in the interest of both of them being happy and moving on, or in the interest of their children, not being in a tense environment for any longer. So yes, there is such a thing as a good divorce. And what we like to do is to try and move the divorce process so that maybe the client can walk away after going, you know what, we needed to do that, it's done, and it was done in the right way. So the reason that we hear more about dads paying maintenance is that in the majority of cases, mom is the primary carer. So maintenance applications will be made in the district court, and it's based on fact. It's not based on, oh, he has a bit of cash or he has this. It's based on fact. It's based on your properties. It's based on your income and what your outgoings are. So there is a measure in the district court as to how much they can order a parent to pay with regards to maintenance. But it's worked out on the facts that are presented on a statement of means by both parties, given to the judge, and they'll make a decision. But maintenance is not for the adults. Maintenance is for the children. This is a huge emotional roller coaster for a client. So it's not for me 
to be your best friend during this journey. I have to remain objective. I'm not going to agree with everything that you ask us to do. I will agree to some things. We're aware of the requirements of the court process. That's here for us to do. You need to know that we're going to be objective. And when you ask us to do something, it's got to be in the best interest of resolving this in the best way for you, for your children, for your ex, so that it doesn't become an unsustainable battle for you to be able to cope with. So you've come to us um, because you've either been served with divorce papers or you've decided that you need to go for a divorce yourself. So the most important thing at this point is to remember that this is your case. This is not about us or our firm. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with asking what you want to do, where you want the divorce process to go. Because we as your solicitors have to remain objective in this entire journey. Because once you start the divorce journey or the judicial separation journey, it's an emotional roller coaster for you as the client.